Bundle of Rights. Bundle of Rights are the legal rights of the real estate title holder. It includes the right of possession, the right to control, the right of exclusion, the right of enjoyment, and the right of disposition. Think of those rights as a set of straws in your hand. When you violate a right, you take away a straw. Take away all the straws, you don't have the property anymore. Real property. Real property is generally immovable. Real property goes with the real estate. Simply said, when you sell your home, those are the things that go with the home, such as pool coverings, maybe that mailbox out in the front yard, or the fence, or the chandelier. Even the house itself is considered real property because it runs with the land. Personal property. Personal property is generally movable. Personal property goes with the person when the property is sold. Personal property can be hypothecated, alienated, and become real property in the form of a fixture. Things that may be considered personal property would be like your couch, your TV, things that do not go with the land when it is sold. A fixture. A fixture is personal property that is now considered real property because it is incorporated into the land. When talking about a fixture, you often hear the word Maria. Maria stands for Method, Adaptability, Relationship, Intention, and Agreement. That is the test for a fixture. Typically, you want to write what goes with the property and does not in the purchase contract. But if it's not mentioned, the law will defer to that Maria test to see if it goes with the land, if it is incorporated into the land. Some examples of a fixture would be a pool covering or a painting that has been nailed to the wall or a chandelier that is attached to the roof. As those things were once personal, but because they now are incorporated into the land, they are considered real. A trade fixture. A trade fixture is a type of fixture that is linked to a business. Even though they are attached to the land, they are considered personal property. For example, a hairdresser's chair or a dentist's chair. Although the chair is attached to the ground, it is not real property because it goes with that hairdresser or that dentist when they leave that property. It goes with the person. That is because those chairs are a part of their business, and therefore it does not run with the land. Repairing rights. Repairing rights are rights an owner would have when they live alongside moving bodies of water, such as a river or a stream. Littoral rights. Littoral rights are rights somebody would have when they live by a static body of water, such as a lake, a sea, or an ocean. Accretion. Accretion is an increase in the actual amount of land due to natural causes. For example, from the gradual action of the ocean or river's waters receding. Avulsion. Avulsion is the sudden violent tearing away of land by water. For example, if a dam breaks and water comes rushing down and strips away the land, that would be avulsion. Reliction. Reliction is the gradual recession of water, leaving land permanently uncovered. Appurtenances. Appurtenances include easements, stock and mutual water companies, covenants, and minerals that are still in the ground. They are considered real property and run with the land. Remember, when something is appurtenant, it goes with the land. Freehold estate. A freehold estate is an estate where the ownership is held for an undefined length of time. Fee simple estate. A fee simple estate is a type of freehold estate. It is also known as an estate of inheritance or fee simple absolute. A fee simple estate can be sold or inherited and is not free of encumbrances. Fee simple absolute is the most interest one can hold in the land. Fee simple defeasible. Fee simple defeasible puts conditions on the use of a property. For example, there could be a condition that no alcohol can be sold on the property, and if that condition is violated, the owner could lose title. Remember, when you violate a condition, that results in loss of ownership. 
Life estate. A life estate is an interest in real property that lasts the length of someone's life. It is a type of freehold estate because it is indefinite in duration. When the life tenant's life ends, title reverts to the original owner. Life estate pure outro V. Life estate pure outro V is an interest in a real property that lasts the length of someone's life who is not the life tenant. It is a type of real estate because it is indefinite in duration. When the measuring life ends, title reverts to the original owner. Less than freehold estates. As opposed to a freehold estate, a less than freehold estate is ownership where title is held for a defined length of time. Estate for years. Estate for years is a less than freehold estate. It is an estate or a tenancy lasting a fixed period of time. For example, a summer rental from Memorial Day to Labor Day weekend would be an estate for years. Or anything that has two dates attached to it is an estate for years because that's a fixed period of time. And because it's a fixed period of time, no notice of termination is needed as the notice of termination was given the moment you moved in. Periodic tenancy. Periodic tenancy is a less than free old estate where tenancy is renewed periodically. For example, week to week, month to month, or even year to year. Estate at will. Estate at will is a type of less than free old estate that can be ended at any time by the landlord or the tenant. Estate at sufferance. Estate at sufferance is a type of less than free old estate where a tenant continues to occupy the property after the lease or rental agreement has ended. You may more commonly know this as having a deadbeat tenant. Chatel Real. Chatel Real often refers to tangible, movable, personal property. My fun way to remember this is chattel sounds like cattle, chattel, cattle, cow, cows, cows move. It's personal property. It's a little fun way to remember when you see chattel, real, you remember that it's personal property. Leases. A lease. A lease is a contract between a lessor and a lessee, which gives possession but not ownership to the lessee. It is also known as a leasehold estate. The tenant does not need to sign a lease to become a lessee. Acting as a lessee is enough. This is not real property. A lease is considered personal property. Think of it like a piece of paper. A lease is a piece of paper and you can move a piece of paper, so therefore leases are personal property. A percentage lease. A percentage lease is a lease where the amount of rent paid by the lessee is a percentage of the gross income of the lessee's business. For example, a commercial parking lot. A net lease. A net lease, which is also known as a triple net lease, this is a lease in which the tenant pays for taxes, insurance, and maintenance in addition to other fees like rent and utilities. This is not common on your typical residential property. It's more common with commercial properties, as opposed to a gross lease. A gross lease is a lease in which the tenant pays a fixed amount to the landlord. That is your standard residential lease, where somebody may just pay $1,000 a month. A sandwich lease. Sandwich lease may sound funny, but you may more typically hear it as subletting. It's basically a sublease. So a sandwich lease is a lease which an existing tenant sublets the property to a third party. The lessee in this situation is also the lessor, hence sandwich, they are in the middle. They have a lessor above them, but they also have a lessee below them. Sale lease back. A sale lease back is kind of what it sounds like. Somebody sells the property and then they lease it back. They essentially become a tenant of the new owner. This works out well for a lot of people if they have a business and they need immediate cash flow. They sell the property, they take the money, put it in their business, and they stay in the property, and they would deduct all the future rents as a business expense. Everybody wins. The new owner gets a new tenant. The person who just sold it gets a lot of cash for their business. And that's why it's called a sale lease back. The seller the vendor becomes the lessee. 
Tenant Improvement Allowances. Tenant Improvement Allowances is the amount a landlord is willing to spend so the tenant can retrofit or renovate a commercial space to be more appropriate for whatever it is they are doing. Abandonment. Abandonment is voluntary giving up the rights and responsibilities of possession of a property. Subleases. Subleases when an existing tenant sublets the property to a third party. The lessee is also a lessor. As we just discussed, the other way to identify this is as a sandwich lease.